Hi there, my name is Kai Vierda and I'm a product manager for CA Release Automation. Welcome to this five part series of training videos for the Rapid Development Kit or RDK. In this second part, we'll cover the overall RDK workflow. When opening the RDK user interface from your browser, you are prompted to provide a username and password. The default username and password match those from CA Release Automation and our super user, S user. From the main screen, you have direct access to the action examples that illustrate common use cases for dealing with command line, script, or REST based APIs. Click the Add Action Pack button to add a new action pack. It's recommended to provide information for all fields. Let's start with the name. Typically this has the vendor and product name for which this action pack is intended. Let's use company X and product Y for our example. Next up is the author. Um, you can use your organization's name here. I will use CA Technologies. Then the primary category. This is an important field as it controls under which category the actions will be listed when browsing for actions in CA Release Automation. I will just repeat the vendor and product name here. Then version, enter a version number for the action pack. And lastly, the description. This is also where you can enter version information for the product this action pack is for. Optionally, you can add a bitmap to represent this action pack in the UI. However, this information is only used in RDK and not used in CA Release Automation. Click Save. And you've now created a container that will hold your actions. Note that you can still change the properties for the action packs if you need to. You do this by hovering and clicking on the Edit button. Next, click the Add Action button to add a new action. You will have a choice of three action types, command line interface, script and RESTful. Choose the type that is most appropriate to support the API of the product you are creating the action pack for. To illustrate the overall workflow, I will click the CLI type. Note that the overall workflow is largely the same for all these three types. For each action type, you have to define the following properties. Details. This includes the name and description for the action as well as the possibility to define a subcategory for the action. The inputs. So typically these are the connection details such as the server name and user credentials. So basically all configuration parameters to enable the action to perform its intended function. Then the execution payload itself. In this case it's the command to execute. And this is also where we can map the input parameters as arguments so that they will execute in context of the input parameters provided by the user. From here, we can also perform uh, test executions directly from RDK so that we can preview the results of the API call against the target system. Then the output. After execution, the action will need to produce output that can be reused as part of the process execution logic in CA Release Automation. RDK provides several out-of-the-box output parameters, but others can be added by filtering data from any of the predefined outputs. And then results. Optionally, you can define a custom message that is returned on successful completion of the action. Also, here you can define optional error conditions that control the error message in case you want the action to fail based on the value of a specific output parameter. You can navigate to the different action properties by clicking on the navigation bar or by scrolling up and down the page. For now, I will provide a name and description and save the action. Note how the action is now marked as incomplete because we didn't provide any other properties other than a name and a description. Once the first action is completed, it is common to reuse this action as the basis for the other actions. By copying the action to a new action with a different name, you can quickly extend the actions within the action pack without having to define each action from scratch.
You can also duplicate the entire action pack by clicking the duplicate button. Once completed, you can generate a ready to use action pack using the export button. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out part 3 of this series where we cover the CLI and script action.